Are you new to the world of classic style and looking to take your outfits to the next level? We've got seven tips for the aspiring gentleman. By the way, we define an aspiring gentleman as anyone, yes, anyone, getting started exploring the world of classic menswear and fine living. But if you're curious, take our free quiz. Now, let's jump right into our tips, starting with number one, invest in quality, not quantity. The number one mistake aspiring gentlemen make is trying to buy too much too quickly. Without considering the long-term quality of an article of clothing or how it integrates into what you already own. It's incredibly easy to get overwhelmed with all of the different choices and style quirks out there. Too often, we try to get everything all at once and we try to get our dream wardrobe right away. This is also the path fast fashion teaches us, since items are designed to be immediately affordable even if they don't last long term. However, classic style is about doing more with less and being frugal and sustainable when it's called for. So it's better to slowly build up your wardrobe over time. It can take years to have a fully comprehensive wardrobe and that's completely normal. And if you're like us, it'll never actually be completed. Your taste will change as you start to learn more about classic menswear and understand what you personally like and don't like. What seems cool at first often turns out to be a regret later. We at the Gentleman's Gazette have all done this, including Raphael. Plus, your body will likely change as you age and grow, and some of your initial purchases might no longer fit by the time that you fully refine and adapt your style. You won't be an aspiring gentleman forever, and changes in life will present new opportunities to dress your age. That being said, don't let style mistakes get you down. It's inevitable, you'll make some mistakes along the way, no matter how much you research and learn beforehand, and to keep your closet free of items you don't actually wear. There's nothing wrong with selling or donating older purchases as needed. Also, we're not saying that quality and quantity have to be mutually exclusive. They can often be balanced by the amount you can invest. Once you've developed an eye for quality, don't be afraid to acquire quantity of quality. Don't think that classic style means conforming yourself to capsule wardrobes. And don't think you should only buy the best of the best. Sometimes more products at a lower quality can be a better choice for you. For instance, rather than buying one bespoke cashmere waistcoat, you might get more use of three off-the-rack wool waistcoats in different colors. Just try to find the best balance for you, your personal style, and your financial situation. Number two, look at the construction methods, not the brand names. Fashion houses are often considered the pinnacle of quality by the masses, and their marketing has only reinforced this idea. But did you know that many of their products aren't even well made? In fact, many brands that most people consider peak fashion, like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Hugo Boss, and Armani, have been well documented to use inferior construction methods in many of their products. Talk about a fashion conspiracy. Meanwhile, many of the most well made and respected brands in classic menswear aren't as high profile. And brands that were once good don't always stay good. As ownership changes, market demands, or rebranding can change the original intentions behind what they produce. What companies like Burberry and Abercrombie & Fitch produce today is very different than what they made 50 years ago. Even some genuinely high quality brands have a name markup, such as Ralph Lauren Purple Label, Tom Ford, or Laurel Piana. The situation here is to learn how quality clothes are made and why some construction methods are better than others. Which, by the way, will help you tremendously when secondhand shopping and save you a ton of money in the long run. In other words, privilege the brands that give you as much information as possible about their products, since it's often a good indicator that they're proud of what they make and want to help you make informed decisions about what you're purchasing rather than just making a sale. Number three, invest in your shoes first. When you're taking your first steps as an aspiring gentleman, the shoes you wear are quite literally the foundation for everything else. And unless you invest in a quality pair that is durable, comfortable, and offers good cost per wear, making the transition to classic style could be a literal pain instead of a metaphorical one. While you by no means have to spend thousands of dollars on Edward Green or John Loeb shoes as your first pair, many entry-level shoemakers who have quality product will still hover around the $200 to $500 range, which can cause some initial sticker shock. But when you're guided by the hallmarks of quality shoes, 
you'll find some examples that are made from hard wearing leather, can be resold as needed, and have versatile styling potential, making their cost per wear much lower than cheaper shoes. Don't worry that your shoe closet isn't as big as Raphael's yet. Aspiring gent, and really, all gent, can get away with just two pairs of high quality shoes. Since they can cover nearly every occasion that would call for them, we recommend investing first and foremost in a more formal black shoe and a more casual brown shoe. You could even focus on just one pair, as a darker, more formal brown can also work for everything except the most formal of occasions, like black tie. That's not to say that you can't or shouldn't look beyond those two choices, as you can just as easily own dozens of dress shoes to optimize all of your outfits. But when you're first starting out as an aspiring gent, try to pick something that will go with your lifestyle. Leading to our next point, number four, classic style doesn't just mean a suit. Who doesn't love a good suit? But if even we at the Gentleman's Gazette don't wear them all the time, you probably won't need to either. There are many different levels to formality, and there are certain occasions where one formality is better suited than others. If you work in a traditional white collar environment, odds are you'll need more suits than someone who works at a warehouse or factory. Whereas someone in a factory environment might get more value out of owning quality boots or more rugged outerwear. Classic menswear isn't just defined by suit wearing. In fact, some of the best and most stylish examples of classic menswear are more casual ensembles. Wearing a suit all the time, regardless of the occasion, can also come across as more costumey than stylish. And while you shouldn't let other people discourage you from dressing the way that you want to, it's also understandable if you get weird looks wearing a white tie ensemble to a barbecue. There's a strategic middle ground here, and understanding formality levels will help you to look your best without coming across as affected or off in the process. Dressing classically doesn't mean being ultra formal at all times. Where you live can also have an impact on what you wear. Someone living in Manhattan will probably have a very different wardrobe than someone in Phoenix or Atlanta, even if they work in similar fields. For instance, things like seersucker and ivory tone garments will get more use in warmer climates. In summary here, build your wardrobe around your lifestyle. With that said, our next point is number five, buy at least one quality suit. Everyone interested in classic style still needs at least one suit. There are some life events where it's simply necessary and having a suit on hand that you know you'll look great in when they inevitably arise is far better than having to get one on short notice. A navy or charcoal gray suit will cover the biggest range of occasions and is the conventional first option, ensuring that you're prepared for most occasions and formalities. But ultimately, it's your suit, so invest in a suit that you're actually excited to wear. For instance, a dark brown or royal blue suit are still conservative enough to fit these conventions, but are different enough to stand out in a subtle way. You could even get something bolder if that's your style, like a burgundy or off-white suit. Because a bolder suit you actually wear is much more stylish than a gray suit that sits in your closet. Just make sure that your bolder selection remains versatile enough to go with a variety of shirts and ties. Speaking of ties, number six, don't neglect your accessories. We usually focus on jackets and outerwear first when discussing how to build a wardrobe. They undeniably have the biggest cool factor and are the most noticeable change you can make when discussing classic style. But even the most lavish suit will look cheap when paired with a polyester dress shirt and Mickey Mouse tie. Overlooked accessories like dress socks and quality boutonnieres can elevate an otherwise pedestrian outfit. This is because quality accessories give that extra pop and show thought in assembling your outfits. Accessories like ties and boutonnieres are close to the face, strategically drawing the eye. High quality accessories comparatively have a much lower price point than new jackets, pants, and shirts. So you can create more outfits with less money, which is always a win in our book. Before we get to today's final point, I'll show you how I've incorporated accessories into my outfit. With my outfit today, I wore a houndstooth sport coat. Underneath, I have a textured polo. On my neck, and just kind of incorporating accessories, I have two layered silver necklaces, and I just find that that's something that's very unique, and again, just kind of adds a little bit of a pop to my outfit. For my belt, I wore a suede belt, 
and just kind of making a play with my shoes because they are also brown. For my bottoms, I decided to wear a pair of dark wash denim. And for my shoes, I'm wearing a pair of brown Belgian loafers. Has a little bit of an accessory just because it has the bow on the top of it. Biggest and most noticeable accessory is my watch. This is a Timex watch. It's a Marlin, it's an automatic. Absolutely love it. And then just kind of drying off of the brown in my outfit, it has a brown leather band. For my fragrance, I'm wearing Oxford. I feel like it goes very well with my outfit. I just love the way that this fragrance smells. For this fragrance and others from the Roberto Ugolini collection, as well as classic menswear accessories, make sure you check out the Fort Belvedere shop here. One of the advantages of classic style is that it allows you to benefit from the sum total of decades of others' experiences. So you have literal centuries to look back on to see excellent examples of it in action. Plus inspiration from classic films, modern period pieces, and the golden age of Hollywood. In your personal journey, don't feel like you have to reinvent the wheel. Find style icons that resonate with you, both in history and contemporary examples like influencers on social media. You can also make an effort to befriend people with similar styles as we've done with the gatherings we've held in Minneapolis, Atlanta, and London. Side note, stay tuned for London videos. There are plenty of trusted sources and groups out there who specialize in providing this information so you can expand your knowledge and refine your tastes. And since you're here, you've already found a good one. Classic style, as with many things in life, is a journey. But we hope we've made getting started a bit easier for you. Have any advice we missed? Let us know in the comments. Thank <laughs> you.